comes from the grave, his body a home of worms and filth. No life in his eyes, no warmth of his skin, no beating of his heart. His soul as empty and dark as the night sky. For eternity he will walk the earth, smelling the sweet blood of the living, feasting upon the bones of the damned. Beware, for he is the living dead. Hey, is this thing on? Oh, it is. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, so last night I sent y'all a quick little video on the rest of the frame of the ground breaker, putting on the arms and building the neck piece. Nothing complicated. Didn't feel like I had to really talk. It was probably easier for me to show you piece by piece with the inches marked on each piece. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to black the entire frame out. Um, when we do that, you kind of want to set it up on a stand. Um, I'll show you here in a second so you can kind of revolve it. Um, we don't want to disconnect any of the elbow joints. Uh, if you noticed, I only PVC glued some of the joints. Uh, it's because you want some of the parts to move uh, freely while some need to actually stay intact to keep things from falling apart. But uh, let me show you here real quick. I'm going to turn this camera around. So, excuse me, Miss Baker. I'm having to work outside today. Okay, so here's the frame in its entirety minus the neck joint. That's still attached to the head. Uh, but again, you want to put it on some kind of stand where you can turn because you, know, you can't be holding this thing while you're painting. Uh, if you remember last night, we glued some parts of this, not everything. The reason being because we need it to rotate, uh, like the elbow joints. Um, what I didn't glue is this part up here, but we did glue this. 
this right here. This and that. The reason being is we don't want these arms to pop out. We want this to pop out, but we do want this to be able to turn. We want this elbow, uh, shoulder joint to be able to rotate. We did PVC the shoulder straps in, because when I ship this thing to y'all, and then you're moving it around, you don't want the arms just to pop off, and it would be no big deal. You could pop it in there, but it's just an inconvenience. Um, so strategically, I've just, over the past couple of years, learned which pieces to glue and which not. Okay, after we black this whole thing out, my next step is to create what I call a chest plate. And what that does is it gives it a build off so that when you put the clothes on there, it doesn't just fall flat. It gives it some kind of volume. And I really only use a, a thick corrugated, corrugated uh, piece of cardboard. And I'll show you how I fix that. Also secure it with two screws on each side <clears throat> just to give it some extra stability. I'll hot glue the joints in here. Um, so once that's all done, we put the clothes on it. You'll see exactly what the chest plate's for. And we'll actually build upon that with uh, some latex, uh, Spanish moss, all that kind of jazz. All right, so let's get busy and I'll show you what it's like. Once we come in here, we're just regular flat black. Um, I get this like for 98 cents a can at Home Depot. That's why I always buy a case of it. Um, so what I usually do is just start off, you know, kind of light and go over everything. You don't want to go in one spot because what's going to happen is it's going to drip. Does it matter? No, because it's going to cover clothes, but I like it just on kind of uniform. So you just want to spot spray. And I even get in the interior of the cavity there. I mean, it's going to take you probably a couple of coats, a couple of flyovers, because uh, as this stuff dries, you'll actually see where you didn't get because the wire will start flowing back through. And we're going to go all around. You want to cover the wood. And remember, that wood support we put back there, that's only, only because of the way that I build this. I've got the center stem, and I've got that T90, or the, the uh, T off right there, but I, I angle that T. So they don't actually, you know, they don't make a fitting that does that. So I have to secure it with a piece of wood back here. So this is what I'm doing. So let me cover this in its entirety. Come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so you can see I blacked out the whole thing. And you're probably saying, Paul, why do I got to black it out? And it's going to be covered with clothes. True, but again, you know, I, I do these for people. I, I sell them, so I, I don't want them to come across looking cheap like i just went to the store threw some things together and that was it i take the time to come in here and, and make it look as possibly good as i can in the event they take it apart they want to store it you know i want these guys to say hey you know this is a pretty good job okay so that piece of wood i was talking about earlier back here it's also going to serve another purpose when we put the clothes on here and i put the suit that's a great spot for me to anchor it with a stable gun so that the clothes don't shift and fall off so that's what we're looking at you want it to look just like that black all the way around it just gives it a professional clean look and, and that's why i like it uh, again you don't have to paint it black but that's what i do um reason that i don't take these parts apart and paint them individually is because once you get glue down into a, i'm sorry paint down into the joints it's very hard for these fittings to go back on and they they scratch it up it looks junky and so this way if people do take it apart it's got a nice clean unpainted section that things will just slide off and slide back on no problem so that's where we're at i'll come back at y'all with the chest piece we're back so i'm gonna show you how to do the chest piece i'm gonna go back a couple of steps when we first built that first center piece uh just to give you an idea of how i get the measurement for this thing um just check this so out we have fun. that center support that we first built with uh, the shoulder straps and just the center support um what i typically do i'm gonna lay this on a big piece of cardboard um and i'm going to measure out just you know because that arm joint goes on so you don't want to come all the way over come back probably about an inch and a half on each side okay so what i'll do is this is just when you're free eye in it there okay so what you're going to want in essence what you're going to want is a piece half half a circle that goes down and back up that's all we're doing here and again doesn't have to be perfect uh, but you just want to kind of basically make that shape. Okay. Go to this side. Now I am working on a permanent solution. I'm having some uh, actual plastic chess pieces made from a, from a die cut that I did and I sent to a buddy of mine. So he'll be fabricating this for me. Uh, meantime, we're going to go with this cardboard method. 
Okay, so let's move this. We're gonna cut that section out, come back and I'll show you how we're going to put it on top of here so we can measure to cut that center neck out. Okay. So here's the neck piece that I cut out, PVC uh, shoulder stems. Let's get that cut. I'll come right back and I'll show you back. So what I've done, you can see I notched that out. And what I also did, get two pieces of duct tape right along the top here. You want to put it and flip it over on both sides, just like that. What that's going to do is once you put these screws in there, because this is cardboard, it's going to give it a little bit of extra support and not let the screw has just sink all the way through it. And when we screw it down, we're actually going to do it slightly at an angle. You don't want it flat because that defeats the purpose of, of having a chest piece here because you want to give it coat some volume. So when we screw it down, it's going to be just like that. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, attached to the black PVC frame that, that we had done earlier. Um, and as I mentioned, we put two screws on each side through the duct tape just to give it some stability. So all we have to do now is just put hot glue all along this ridge, up and through the neckline on both sides. And if you notice from the side, you see how the chest piece actually comes off at a 45 degree angle. And that's to give it that balance and to give it that volume. So once you put the clothes on, it looks like it's an actual chest, not just flat hanging down. So let's get some hot glue put on there real quick. And you'll see what I'm saying. Just all along. You know, once this hot glue dries, um, it's gonna help keep this cardboard from, from bowing so much from the weight of the clothes also. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the phone here and do this at one time, but I have my camera girl here with me today. AKA my daughter. So, there you go, just like that. No need to be super neat because all this is gonna get covered with latex and uh, cheesecloth that we're gonna end up painting anyway. Okay, cool. So, once that's done, that dries off, what we wanna do is go ahead and we wanna spray this whole thing black as well. Um, don't, damn, don't saturate it, just kinda of frost it. We just wanna make everything cohesive in one color. notice I just do a little spot sprays. I don't just spray continuously. Like I mentioned before, you don't you want a bunch of paint drips everywhere. And it's just like the airbrushing. And I'll even get the back side. Even though you won't see it, I still do it. Good time for you to touch it in the parts of the PC that probably started showing through that didn't get painted originally. Cool, all right. So there you go. We're now totally black frame. This thing will be ready to put the head on, clothing, and it's just going to come together like that. Hey guys, it's Paul with Twig Rotten Dallas. Hey, I don't do videos very often, much less live demos or any demos for that matter. Uh, something I'm going to try to change up this year. Um, but I've been getting a lot of questions about my groundbreaker skulls. Uh, you know, people are like, hey, those are, those are really kick-ass. How, how do you do those? Do you buy those? Do you make them? I mean, do you cast your own skulls? Well, the answer is yes. I, I cast my own skulls because I bought a mold from Nightmare Makers. Uh, they make some awesome products. Uh, but, you know, as many skulls as I do, it was more cost-effective for me to get the mold. But... So let me run you through real quick on how I get my skulls to the point they get to. So obviously, you know, you use your two-part rigid foam, you cast the mold of it, pull the mold, you come out with this cool looking skull. This one, I was doing something different with it, so it's not a full skull. But you know, when it dries and comes out, it's self-skinning, so it's got that sheen to it. So you're gonna have to knock that down. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I do, I used to do the glue and paper towel thing, paper mache, kind of got out of that, um, didn't work for me too much. What I transitioned to was paper towels and latex. Why? Because it gives it more of a rubber feel, more of a skin-like texture, and just more realistic overall, which is something I'm into. Um, so initially, you know, you get your paper towel, you get your latex, strip them, cover the entire thing except for the teeth. I don't do the teeth because I do something totally different with those on, on the end of it. Um, let that dry now before I hop onto that I posted a video earlier you know everybody uses a small container 
um, like I do to, to brush on your latex and what they don't realize is all that buildup on there sometimes they'll toss this and they don't realize how much they're throwing away what I do is I let that dry once I'm done I dump the rest of it out I let that dry and sometimes I'll even go all up on the sides of it here so I get a full circle around it once that dries I pull it out I've got all this residual which I use for fake skin I mean you can see it looks it looks pretty awesome because it's already textured like skin I'll come in I'll, sh I'll shred it sometimes it already comes out in pieces that I can use <coughs> excuse me but I'll go in using a uh, 3m spray adhesive I'll kind of hit it in certain spots right and then I'll take some pieces of latex where I think it may look really cool for skin um, and then I'll just kind of press that on there let that dry and then I'll go back and I'll kind of just hot patch it with some more latex in certain spots you know so I can get all up in those crevices because that glue will hold but it won't hold permanently but for right now and then until you get it to that point that's what you need get up in there get the areas just latex go over it and it's going to kind of blend it into the piece as well once I'm done with that with the loose skin on these bare areas I'll go up I'll put some more spray adhesive I'll get a cotton ball I'll start dabbing just dab lightly and it's going to leave residue of cotton all over it you hit that with some more latex just kind of lightly dab it it's going to give you some more of that uprooted skin look once that's done and that's dried I'll hit it with a blow dryer I'll be on it for at least 10 minutes until it's it's you know it's tacky but it doesn't come apart I'll leave that sitting there what I'll do is on the back side I, I don't put any kind of skin back here because what I'm gonna do is use creepy cloth back here on all my skulls from my ground breakers I use creepy cloth I let it drape I'll spray the spray adhesive apply the uh, get some right here apply the creepy cloth just a small section of it but enough to kind of hang like hair and once that's done I'll brush the entire thing over on the top with latex once that dries and it adheres and it sinks in it kind of blends and it has a really cool effect also really good for holding on to that hair that I ended up putting on there in the end too <clears throat> so once the creepy cloth is on there and it's dry I'll go in and I just spray adhesive again I'll spray over the uh, creepy cloth and I'll start attaching strands of hair to it. Like I said, I only use the 3M spray to temporarily hold things together, not for a permanent solution because it will end up pulling off. And once that hair is all in place, I'll go in with some more latex and I'll just lightly dab, 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 dab until that is all on there. Once it's all on there and you're happy with it, you can go in, you can start painting, texturing. Um, I've got one that's completed here. Now this isn't, I just did this one for the demonstration purposes. Uh, but you can see what I'm talking about. The creepy cloth on here, you can see how it blends into the head. It almost looks like it came from a crypt. Um, I attach some hair strands, kind of pull that creepy cloth in front of the eyes before, you, before it dries, you know, when you're latexing it. And kind of just, just hit everywhere. Just hit everywhere with the dark shadows. Uh, on the teeth, like I said, I don't latex the teeth. I'll come in, I'll score them with an X-Acto knife so I can give them some depth all up in the crevices there. What I'll do is I'll take a stain. I'll take a stain all in the gum lines, all through the teeth, let that dry. Sometimes I'll come in with a polyurethane and make give those teeth a gloss. And I'll hit it with just strips of white. So you can kind of tell, you know, they're actually teeth. They don't just sink into the piece because it's so dark. Um, but again, you can get as detailed as you want with these. Not as detailed as you want. Some people don't really care because they're in the haunt. And it's dark. You really can't tell. But I'm a detail freak, so I kind of go above and beyond. Uh, I'll even go up under here and put some Spanish moss. So by the time the piece is done and that thing is sitting there on the body, I mean, it's it's looking pretty cool. But uh, that, that's pretty much it. That's, in a nutshell, that's everything I do. Obviously, there's a lot more tiny processes in getting it to that point, but but that's the gist of it. That's That should be enough to get you going. If you got any questions, just holler at me, let me know, message me. Uh, probably the easiest way to get a hold of me is here on Facebook, or you can email me at twigrod.com. Appreciate your time, y'all. Have a good night. Hey, everyone. What's going on? It's Paul with Twig Rot in Dallas again. Last night, I gave you a video about the skull, the ground breaker skulls that I do, how I get to that point, how I kind of finish them off. Um, what I didn't actually show you was the actual process of putting that creepy cloth on here, like I mentioned. Um, like I said before, you know, you want to cut a section off, make it hang just kind of like hair, and nothing too extravagant, because you're going to shredding it and pulling it. Uh, once you get it placed, 
you know, like I told you, use the uh, 3M spray just as an adhesive to keep it in place until you're ready to latex. So once you've got it on there, just kind of lightly, so you know, hit it with spots, and that should be good. And like I said, that's just to kind of keep it in place. So you can go ahead and start tugging on it, and it's not going to move all over the place on you. Um, I like to pull single strands, pull them down in front of the eyes, because what's going to happen is when you put latex all over this, it's going to pretty much take, you know, form into the shape of the skull, just kind of sink it all in. So it looks like one seamless piece. And once, it, once all it's said and done, get your casting latex. What you can do is just kind of brush over the entirety of the head here. And don't be afraid to put too much on. Dab, dab, like I say, or you can just kind of spread it. So you want to go all around the skull. I'll do this section real quick and then I'll show you once I'm done with it exactly kind of what it needs to look like as far as application. Make sure you get in all the little grooves, especially by the temple area back there because you don't want that stuff pulling off. Okay, and those vein areas I mentioned, just take your latex, blend it into those flesh pieces you already got hanging off there. And the cool thing about this is when you latex the creepy cloth, it it tends to rubberize just like everything else. So once you pull it on there and it dries, it's not going to go anywhere. And you really want to get towards the bottom of the base too, because what's going to happen is when you put the head on your round breaker, you don't want the whole thing just lifting off. It looks kind of kind of tacky. So and make sure you want to make it all look like it's like I said, just kind of one whole skull piece. It's a pretty quick process. Uh, like I said, it's, you know, nothing major. It's not rocket science. Okay. Once you've got the entire head pretty much covered, you got all the creepy cloth on top of the head laced with, uh, with latex, all the vein regions up front. What we're left with are these ends that are hanging here. Before you put latex on that, what I recommend, get in your blood dryer. Like I said, I hit it for about 10 minutes. Here it's just demonstration purposes, so I'm just gonna hit it for a couple of minutes. Go all the way around, especially in the face. Okay, let's say we simulated 10 minutes here. Or two minutes, sorry. We're going to go ahead and latex the hanging portions. Just lightly brush that on. You don't have to soak the entire thing. You want some of it kind of free flowing, um, but you know, for the top part, you want it. You want to mimic the the hair that's coming off the back of the skull and the sides of the skull. So just hold it out. Just kind of lightly brush up against it. And once you feel you've got enough coverage there, you should be good to go. Blood dryer, I uh, went over everything and, and pretty much semi-cured everything to where it's you know pretty dry to the touch, but not completely cured just yet. But I mean, if you go in, you can see what I was talking about. It kind of starts to mimic veins, um, you know, where the latex is kind of adhered to it here. And if you look all the way around, you can see all the little mini pieces. Now all these pieces are going to come together once I tone and, and paint everything out. 
Um, like I said, I went all the way to the base. You can see how it gets that funky little curve. And you start pulling everything over, and it looks kind of cool because once you put the hair on there, it actually starts to look like a scalp. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in. Uh, I kind of had dark in the eyes earlier, but I'm going to go in and kind of frost these with flat black, get more in that mouth area. What I want to do is just, I want to sink all those dark tones into where they naturally would fall. This way, when I go to start painting and texturing, uh, I've got a guide to follow already. So give me a minute, and we'll be back once I just kind of lightly frost this over in a, in a flat black. Okay, so what I did was I took this guy outside, like I said. I pretty much spray the entire piece over in a flat black, just kind of bring all the pieces together into one, you know, one seamless color. Um, didn't hit everything. I don't need to because what I'm going to end up doing is going there with the airbrush, uh, highlighting some parts of white, like the actual bone area, and just kind of bring that skull portion of it out. And like I mentioned, uh, I don't do the teeth right now. That'll be the very last part. I'll go in there. I'll score these puppies here, all the way around, even all back in the ear. I'll carve them out, make them make them look like individual teeth. Um, typically what I'll do is I'll, I'll get black indie ink, go over the, all the teeth because that ink will sink into that foam and then I'll immediately brush them, kind of brush the excess off. I'll come back with a stain and I'll get all up in this gum line. Um, you know, what I'll end up doing is putting actually more latex in here, kind of building up that gum line so it actually looks like a gum. But after that I'll, I'll get the stain, go through here, go through all the cracks and what it'll do is it'll bring those teeth out and it makes it look really cool. And that's pretty much it for that. After that, last thing after the teeth is going to be the hair. And I'll do another video on that. And like I said, I'll you know, put the hair on there with 3M spray, go in there with some latex, kind of blend it in and brush it in so it doesn't look like just pieces of hair just stuck on there. And that'll be it. I will see you on the...